Why is it that in India, everyone is paying with QR codes? Buying a train ticket? Scan. Getting groceries? Scan. In a rural village called Lordhai, locals would attach a mobile phone to a bamboo stick so that the phone can get internet access just so the entire village can pay with QR codes. <laughs> that's how you pay. Yeah, that's how you pay. Everyone's using a smartphone. Everyone has good speeds of data. Everyone has a digital bank account and that's how the real life is. So India right now does the most amounts of digital transactions globally. That's crazy. Just this August, UPI has reached 20 billion transactions in a single month. 20 billion in a single month. I have so many questions. How did UPI get so big? How is this impacting people's spending behavior? And if this technology works so well in India, would it work in the States or another country? I realized that the reason why everyone is using QR codes to pay is in three parts. Disclaimer, I'm trying to answer why people use QR codes in India from a UX, psychology, and technology perspective. While the financial and legal implications of this payment method is important, it is not the focus of this video. All right, let's start. To understand why people are using QR codes, we have to understand first how they're doing this. Enter UPI, Unified Payment Interface. This is the backend system developed by the National Payments Corporation of India. Before 2016, when you wanted to send money to a merchant or a bank, you needed to know a lot of things. Bank account number, bank name, branch name, IFSC code, UPI gets rid of all of that. All you need to know to send money is a phone number or a UPI ID. Instead of a middleman holding all your funds, UPI sends money from bank to bank. This is safer, faster, and you're gonna like this one, free. What's unique about India with technology is the rise of mobile phones. I covered this in other videos, but basically smartphones blew up. Compared to laptops, it's cheaper, easier to carry, and eventually data and the internet became quite affordable. So within the last decade, as phones blew up, UPI saw this trend and was like, okay, I see you it quickly caught on and adapted to the mobile user experience. At one point, you could even use Nokia phones, the ones with keypads and everything, to scan and pay. But what made UPI really come to life are consumer apps. Phone pay, Paytm, Google Pay. If UPI was the skeleton of a person, these consumer apps would be the muscle. So why did UPI blow up specifically in India? Let's start from a user experience perspective. Just imagine the scenario. You're going to a chai wala. You want your masala chai right now, but you don't have cash on you. That's fine because even the smallest chai wala would have a QR code. All you have to do is scan, pay, boom. Next thing you know, you're strutting around with a cup of cutting chai, five packs of parlji, and a plate of onion pakora. The act of paying is so easy. This user flow compared to other payment experiences has a pretty low cognitive load, which is the total mental effort placed on a person's working memory at any given time. It's also a pretty accessible payment method because to set it up, all you need is a bank account and a phone. This is way more simple than the credit card approval process, which may take many days and is contingent on a credit score. Currently, even foreigners can use UPI when they visit India. So as you can imagine, UPI has changed the way small businesses do business. Even businesses from the most rural parts of India can trade with consumers living in urban locations. From a grassroots level, this has really helped the economy. Also, for both consumers and businesses, there is no transaction fee. Sending money online is free. Yeah, it's possible. Who would have thought? UPI also has great interoperability, which is a fancy word for it works everywhere. Even through texting consumer apps like WhatsApp, you can send money midway through a text. Now your auntie from across the country has no excuse not to send you money during holidays. Another major reason why everyone pays with QR codes in India is security. Let's come back to this Chaiwala stand. As soon as you send money, both you and the Chaiwala owner get a confirmation. A transaction has occurred. There's no such thing as pending transaction. Also, every single transaction is authorized by a secure pin set by the user. 
with this fast speed and pin feature, scammers became unemployed on the spot. Or did they? They actually just got very creative. So when this whole QR code thing first started, every store had a machine that displayed this code. And when you scan and pay this machine, it would have a voice that comes out of it saying, This audio announcement meant to be a confirmation that the buyer has paid their bill. Scammers caught on to this pretty quickly. And what they would do is scan the QR code and instead of actually paying, they would pull up this pre-recorded audio recording that mimics this audio announcement pretending that they have paid. And the store owner, maybe they're tired or doing something else in the corner, hears this audio announcement and think that the person has paid when in reality, they just got shoplifted. It got pretty bad. Some shop owners would print out the QR codes on a piece of paper, stick it on the wall. But what would happen is as they're again, busy doing something in the store, these scammers would come in, rip off the QR code put a new QR code on that links to their own account. So every time a new customer comes in and scans the code, the scammer's getting paid. Yeah, unfortunately, fraud still happened, but builders caught on. With each scam story, they iterated on the product and built a better, more secure version. For example, in one of these apps, there's a button that shows up front and center on the interface. Send one rupee. You might think, hmm? Why would I send a single rupee to someone? Turns out this button is here solely for one purpose, confirmation. Before you send large funds to someone else, you wanna make sure you're sending it to the right account. So you would send one rupee, ask if that person has received it, then you would feel reassured sending the rest of your funds to that account. From what I understand, this is a pretty common thing in India. And the speed of these transactions mimic the feeling of handing someone a bill physically in real life in real time. So when you're building a product for a specific user group, you want to understand what are their specific preferences? How does culture impact the way they perceive security? So sending money through QR codes has become really easy, which makes me wonder, how is this impacting people's spending behavior? Well, just like tap to pay, money doesn't feel real. According to both anecdotes and research studies, people sometimes feel like they're spending like a billionaire. According to one study analyzing spending habits, after collecting over 200 surveys and 20 interviews, they found that around 74% of the respondents admitted that UPI has led to increased spending, while only 7% has said that it led to decreased spending, even though most of the participants in the study already budget. Many of you watching here are probably builder of products, but remember, we're also consumers. We're human. Frictionless payment sounds great, but be mindful of its side effects. Now that you understand its design, you can better take a pause before you buy things and think, do I really need this? Or do I feel like I can get it because spending money no longer feels real? If you're building any sort of payment experience and your users are struggling with impulse purchases, you might want to introduce a higher friction in this experience so that people can actually pause and think before they buy. Some examples are informational pop-ups, warning signs, because as shown in studies, people would appreciate apps that help them curb their spending and develop better financial habits. Also side tangent, Paying with QR codes has manifested in its own way in China. Let me know if you want a video on this or any other topic covering tech in China. So would QR codes work in the States? As of now, it's hard. First, there's a cultural difference when it comes to the idea of money. In India, the UPI system, you are paying with money that is in your bank. In the United States, where credit cards and buy now, pay later schemes have become popularized, the idea of money is different. So to move to a UPI system, there would have to be some fundamental cultural shift when it comes to money spending habits. A second reason relates to the system. Many payment systems in the US are siloed. For example, if I want to send money to a friend, I use Venmo. 
if I want to send money to pay for a croissant at a cafe, I use cash or credit card. UPI, on the other hand, integrates across banks, payment providers, and merchants, making it universally accepted for peer-to-peer, business-to-consumer, and business-to-business transactions. But who knows? The world is changing. Never say never. All right, tech people, what can we learn? Notice that UPI might not work well everywhere, but it works extremely well in India. Instead of building for a thing that fits everyone, really dig deep into the specific pain points of the specific users that you want to help. Understand their needs, cultural preferences, socioeconomic background. All of that funnels into you building something that actually helps with a specific problem. And I'm wondering if you have used UPI, what has been your experience? And for those of you who don't live in India and hasn't used UPI, why do you think this system hasn't expanded across the world? Why does it just work for India?